Okay. Um, yeah, I don't remember the official title of this uh, in your program. This is sort of what I've come to call resources for the forgotten classes. Uh, we talk about Common Core, we talk about math, we talk about English. I am an English teacher, uh, was an English teacher. Um, and so I'm like, yes, we get all the good stuff. Um, and then all the other courses, when you go look for Common Core resources for science, you get math standards. When you go look for Common Core resources for social studies, you get reading standards. And so this is not going to be so much about common core resources. I hate to tell you that uh, because you're going to find English and math. Uh, what it is going to do is be an overview of a lot of different places you can go to find resources that fit these other classes. Lesson plans, uh, images, videos, uh, all those kinds of things. So usually what I try to do up front is I try to let people know what I'm going to talk about because it's sometimes a little different than the brochure because from the time that I turned that in to the time I actually produced this credit this workshop it's like eh, it might have changed a little so if this is not what you were hoping for this is a good time to go to one of those other sessions even if you didn't sign up for it nobody's gonna stop you at the door um, and the reason I say that is because when I'm at workshops and conferences and stuff that's what I do if I walk into something and it's not exactly what the brochure said or maybe I misread the brochure, God knows that happens enough, um, <clears throat> I will go find someplace else to go. We're gonna operate off the Simulu page. That, the link to this page will be made available to you through the resources for Leader U. Um, I, I don't have a link to give you right now, but it, you, you will be able to access it, um, should be able to access it, whether you have a Simulu page or not. Uh, but I highly recommend Symbolu as one of those resources that every teacher uses in some form or fashion. I got started with it a number of years ago. It sort of turned into my go-to homepage for all of my browsers. I have a Symbolu page set up for me personally that gives me one-click access to my Facebook, my Twitter account, my Google Plus, Google Drive, school web page, my blog, uh, all of my bank accounts, car, credit card accounts, so I can know just how far in debt I am at any given time. Um, all those things are there. And then I have other pages that I have created for other things like iPhoneography. So there's a whole list of, of apps that help you take pictures and edit them on the iPhone or um, Common Core resources specifically for English, Common Core resources specifically for math. And then because this is shareable, other people are sharing them all the time. You can go in and search and find other Symbolu pages for stuff that you need. But I was using it in my English class. In the back of the room, I had three or four computers. That was my home page for that class. So it had a tile for every web page I thought the students might need to go to to do research or to learn more about reading or to uh, learn how to type better on the computer. And so when they pulled up at that time, Internet Explorer, sad. Um, they would be able, they would have this in front of them and, uh, and they could go to whatever page that I wanted them to do. All of the tiles can be color coded. These colors are meaningless up here. I just did color coding to show you it could be done. So every row has a different sort of color theme and you could tie those colors to whatever theme you want to do. So what I'm going to do is just randomly select some of the stuff that's up here. We'll talk about what's here. We don't have time to talk about them all obviously, but I sort of have them in kind of groupings around and if I can find them all, we'll talk about sort of all those groupings. The one thing that I do want to point out for you down a couple of pages like these two at the bottom, they say Symbolu on them. That's because they're a link to another Symbolu page that has this many resources all on it of different stuff. Okay, So even though it looks like there's not much here, probably when you go through it, you're going to find at least about 300 links. And hopefully through all of that, you will find something that fits what you're doing. Now I'll say up front, I try my best to find Latin resources because that's the foreign language we teach at my school is Latin. Uh, not there, uh, unless you want to pay for something. So uh, some of the courses that you may be teaching, we may not talk about specific things for your course, but we'll also talk about some tools that can be used in your course 
for what you're already doing. So I've sort of I've tried to mix it up to give a little something for everyone. Now that I've said all that and nobody's left the room yet, unless maybe I should close my eyes for a few minutes and then and we'll start over. Uh, let me tell you who I am. My name is Tim Childers. I'm the assistant principal at the Ellen and STEM Academy in Knox County, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee. We are a public lottery driven magnet STEM high school. That's a hard thing to get out all at one time. Um, and so there are no, when I say public lottery, there are no tests to take, no GPAs. It's you want to go, you put your name in the hat. We have 14 high schools in Knox County and, and each high school has a certain number of seats based on their population compared to the whole county. And so we have all 14 school zones represented at our school um, and we will take in about another 150 freshmen this year. Um, this coming year put our population at about 600 uh, and our school seats 500. So next year is going to be a lot of fun. Um, uh, yeah, so anyway, we won't even go there. Um, but having said all that, I, I have a couple of friends of mine here. I used to be in Bradley County. I was a, a middle school English teacher for a while, secondary tech coach for a while, uh, and then this opportunity came open, and so I took a job. I was living in Cleveland, took a job in Knoxville. I've been commuting for two years. That got to be old, so I moved to Chattanooga, and now I'm still commuting to Knoxville, so. <laughs> Um, don't ask. It's a long story. All right, so let's get started. Um, one of the first things that I want to show you, a lot, of, a lot of school districts in Tennessee have access. Some of these things you're going to know. You're going to say, I already knew that. That's okay. Let me, let me get started and sort of work my way in, all right? Uh, so one of the things that, um, that I want to show you is whether you have a subscription to Discovery Streaming or not, Discovery Streaming has resources for you. When you click on, I'm not logged in here, and if I just click on up here under Teachers, and it gives me these grade bands down here, if I hover over one, um, for instance, for elementary grades, I've got resources for social studies, and I've got resources for health, I've got resources for technology, and Discovery Streaming has already implemented Common Core Standards throughout, so when you go there to find those resources that Discovery Streaming has, these are open to the public. You don't have to sign in to get to these. So even if you don't have a Discovery Streaming subscription, you can still access these kinds of resources, okay? So Discovery Streaming, discoveryeducation.com is the website. And again, if, if you wanna make notes, fine. If, I mean, you, maybe you would make a note as to what you wanna to try to find when you go to the assembly page. You're gonna get all these links, so, um, Hopefully that will be uh, that will be good. Um, the other is because we are a STEM school, I felt I needed to add a Simbaloo page just for STEM resources. If it will open, this is what happens when you trust a uh, a Wi-Fi account. I'm trying to see if I have an Ethernet cable here anywhere. I'm not seeing one, so that's good. So we're going to move on. <laughs> um, we may go to my phone here in a minute and just operate from there. Khan Academy is another one. Oh, geez, I've lost everything now. Nothing like doing this when we are uh, video recording, is there? Probably all of you got online and that just sapped all the stuff out of me. So, let's do this. Give me just a second. Let's see if I can get my hotspot turned on. Okay. I will not be denied. Okay. All right, so let's try this again, if I can get the page to fully load. All right, so there is a simple loop, or a, uh, not a simple loop page, there is a web page out here called StemSpark that is the regional hub for the Knox County District. And when you come into the StemSpark page, uh, you can create an account there. Anybody's available to create an account. Teachers are uploading lesson plans of how to implement STEM dynamics across the disciplines. 
So you'll find STEM lessons for English, STEM lessons for science, STEM lessons for language arts, STEM lessons for social studies, and those kinds of things. So there are others like this around the state. The, the Race to the Top funds initially set up six hubs. Uh, this is the one that we operate with at our school is STEM Spark. So I just throw that up there. Um, let's go to this page, which is where I wanted to go. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the page, duh. So what I did, that's what threw me. I was still trying to get online. This is the page that I was on. And when I click STEM, STEM Stars Resources, these are the resources that I put together for people who went through STEM training at our school. So all of these tiles here are directly related or indirectly related to STEM. I'm back with myself now. It's like second that to be opened up in another window. The other thing that we'll talk about, Khan Academy. Most of us know Khan Academy for math, but Khan Academy also has arts and humanities. So if you need some videos to talk about history, or if you need videos to talk about uh, philosophy, art history, they are branching out now into other areas besides math. Um, you know, Khan Academy is one of those, you either love them or you feel less strongly about them. Um, and so I just throw that out there to let you know that it's there. Uh, it doesn't come with a recommendation for me, it's just there, okay? Um, although if you want a recommendation for me, I'd be happy to give you one. Um, how many of you are on Twitter? Not very many. Oh, for shame. Okay. All right, so I've got this tile set up so that it will pop up right here in the middle. And if you don't have an account, you'll need to create one. But let me just tell you why that's important and why I think that every teacher ought to be on Twitter. Um, so I have, this, I have this account, and these are the people who are posting stuff that I follow or they've been... They've been retweeted by somebody that I follow. But we have a hashtag for this conference, LeaderUTN. And the hashtag, if you watch Jimmy Fallon on The Tonight Show, it's hashtag, okay? Uh, and so it's the pound sign. And if I, I've already searched for this once, so if I come in here, it's gonna narrow my results down to just things people are tweeting at this conference. And so even though I'm not in the session next door, if somebody in that session is tweeting out information about what's going on, then I have access to that. So you'll see I was, getting, I was doing a lot. In fact, I'm probably one of the only people actually tweeting from this conference today, which just really made me sad. Yeah, yeah, I saw this one down here. I was really happy about that. And Samantha Bates. I think we might be the three, okay? Um, so I've been tweeting from the one on eDiscipline. Uh, and earlier, uh, a few from Mr. Lawson's keynote address that I noticed he happened to see online because I tagged him in the tweets. Um, and so those kinds of things are, are nice, but there are also conversations. Uh, so let's go to T10. That's not what I want to do. Let's, let's go here. So on Thursdays at 8 o'clock, I help to moderate a chat for the Discovery Educator Network. And every post that we make, we put this, we put this hashtag here, Den Chat. Now, it's obviously not Thursday at 8 o'clock, but I know that happened. And so I can go back and search that hashtag, and everything they talk about, the whole dialogue for an hour, is there for me. A moderator will ask a question, and the people in the chat will offer answers. One of the questions, we just started, uh, we have a teacher at our school who just started a brand new chat this past Wednesday called Knox Chat. Hopefully trying to drive teachers from Knox County, but anybody's welcome to join us. Um, and so he was one, one of the questions he asked was, what are you reading over the summer? And so the people that were in the chat were giving out book titles, the things they recommended, and we were able to ask, why do you recommend this? What's important about this? They would tell us, and then we sort of started making a list of maybe things we want to read. So Twitter is a great PD place. I say all that because there is an ELA chat, there's a math chat, there's a social studies chat, there's a science chat, there's a French chat, there's a Spanish chat. Um, any subject that you teach, there's a chat out there, okay? And, and it will happen at some time, it has its own hashtag, 
you can either join them in the conversation or just search for it later and see what they all said and you will find resource after resource after resource and if you have a question about resources for your particular subject put that question on Twitter with a hashtag and somebody will find it and they will give you the resources you need usually what I have found is that when I post a question out on Twitter I've got an answer within about five minutes but now I've got you know I've, I've got a lot of people following me so maybe that's the rule of whatever um, but it doesn't take long to start getting answers so if you don't have a Twitter account I highly recommend that you get one and I recommend that you join the conversation Twitter will be your very best professional development tool online hands down um, I'll just show one other thing about Twitter uh, that I did not it, it wasn't available when I first started with Twitter but I have the ability to create lists okay, I've got <coughs> I've got about 1200 people that I'm following I can't keep up with 1200 people and I might be keeping up with 70 of them maybe on a good day um, but if I go down here to the list and like under stem resources I have this list it will automatically pop up any person I'm following that I've put in this list who I think is going to be able to help me find stem resources it only shows me what they're tweeting everybody else is gone so I can narrow my focus down so I'm, I'm starting a list for photography I'm starting a list for administration I'm starting a list for Knox County teachers I've got this list started for stem different kinds of interests of, from the people that I follow that I can put them in that list now they will get notified so and so has put you in this list they will not get notified if you take them out of the list that's always a good thing okay. <laughs> all right so that's Twitter just to kind of throw it out there for you uh, you're probably familiar with TED talks but I find that a lot of people are not familiar with the fact that there is a an education TED where people are taking TED talks and creating lessons out of them using the video for students to watch you can put in questions at the end multiple choice questions or short answer questions and then a deeper dive section to go deeper into the information and so even if you don't find a video that addresses your subject you can take any TED talk on the internet and create your own lesson you can decide to make that private just for you or you can decide to make that public for other people to search and if they find it they have the ability to edit it and make it their own so it's a crowdsource kind of curriculum area for people using TED talks and videos okay all right, is that my phone? Yeah, let me move oh, it over. Am I hearing in that that um, we've got those of us who are doing open source educational resources integrate those without any um, <coughs> appending or concern about copyright? I'm assuming we'll append, but no copyright concerns. There are no copyright concerns here. That's correct. This is sponsored through TED. Good question. Any other questions before I move on? All right. I'm going to give you my short wait time today. All right. Practice my long wait time later. All right. So, another great place to go Larry Ferlazzo. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He is the Cyberary Man on Twitter. And he is, let's hope this will open. I've moved my connection now. Surely I can't want to get that far. <sighs> I'm sorry? Um, well, let me go back over here and tell you because I always get it wrong. Um, it is F E R L A Z Z O. And it's not going to open for me. Oh, man. Okay. Where is he at? All right, I'm gonna let that sit out there for a minute because it may be a problem with his website. Um, all right, you'll also find things like the Baseball Hall of Fame. Please open, <laughs> please. 
Don't make me restart my. Honestly, I think I'm having trouble with my MacBook Pro. I did not ever want to say that out loud. Uh, <laughs> but I really think that the internet connection of my MacBook Pro is about to be gone. So let's turn it off and turn it back on again. I, I do apologize. I really do. I wish I had my air with me. I have no problems with it. This is, this is just one of the reasons why you refresh. See there? It's one of the reasons why you refresh technology every so often because this now is three years old. Baseball Hall of Fame. You might not ever think about it. Baseball Hall of Fame has lesson plans available for teachers using baseball history, baseball stats. Um, over here under education, I'm actually on the curriculum page. You'll see here they have things for math, science, social studies down here at the bottom. The arts are down here, character education. They already have lesson plans with all the stuff you need in them to go teach whatever. Or to pull part of it out and put it in blended. Okay. I, won't, I have the site up here, but I won't take you there right now. Country Music Hall of Fame in Nashville. Last year I brought in 50 teachers from around the country through the Discovery Educator Network and we had an event called Den Gone Country. And the biggest part of the day was we spent a day, a Saturday, at the Country Music Hall of Fame in their education department. They brought in violin and fiddle players to come in and teach us about music and to teach us about the difference between the two styles of playing that instrument, even though it is the same instrument. Um, and then we had a songwriter come in and talk with us in the afternoon who took us through the process of writing a song and we gave her themes and words and phrases and she pulled those all together and created a song that was just phenomenal. Um, and now, you know, she's just one of these people that a struggling artist in Nashville playing some, some gigs there locally and around. Uh, now she's got a single out on the radio and traveling around. It's nice to watch her on Facebook as her career's taken off. Um, and all of the stuff that they do at the Country Music Hall of Fame, all of that curriculum is free for you to take and use. They will also do Google Hangouts with you and bring those experts into your classroom. NASA will do that. NASA will bring an astronaut into your classroom, help teach your kids. Um, so these kinds of things are out there for you to look at uh, and, and see what you might be able to do with them. So, and you know, I've got the, I got the Baseball Hall of Fame here, but there's too many sports Hall of Fames to put them all on here. So I recommend that whatever your sport is, you know, if there's a bocce ball Hall of Fame, go there and see if they're offering a uh, curriculum for you. This is the Larry Falazzo site, and he, he curates websites by theme, big long lists of places to go to find exactly what you want. And he is, he is one, that when you create your Twitter account before you go home today, um, he is one you'll want to follow because he posts out every day a new site that is, that's really interesting to, to look at. So Larry Ferlazzo is one. It did say in the, de in the description of this we were going to go really breakneck speed, did it not? Okay, all right, I just want to make sure that uh, nobody's upset with me. Um, and then, uh, let's not forget, Tennessee has the Electronic Learning Center. I always forget to go there. I don't know what it is about the State Department that makes me forget that, but, it's not, but it is there, and it's a pretty good resource. Um, and you can download through iTunes all kinds of lesson plans for math and science and English and other kinds of st the social studies is on there. Um, now, I have to tell you, and I'm being videoed, so I'm going to say this really carefully, okay? I have downloaded some of the lesson plans from the State Department of Tennessee's iTunes U page, and they are Rock Solid 3, okay? So if you ever want to know what a Rock Solid 3 looks like, the Department of Education can show you. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right, so, uh, and then we have something like the Wayback Machine, which is an interesting little site that can be used for social studies and other kinds of things, digital citizenship, lessons that you're doing. The Wayback Machine will take you back to what a website looked like on a particular day. It takes images from websites. I'm not sure that you'll be able to find your kids' Twitter pages on here, 
But if I type in my blog post, for instance, it will tell me that it has saved my website 33 times since 2007. And you will see right back here is one that has been circled. And so that's February. Let's go back further than that because you'll see this is what my blog looks like currently. Okay. Um, but then if I go back to, let's pick a year. The timeline is right here where this is. Um, and so all those little black marks are where they have saved it. So let's just, let's go back. Let's see what I was doing back in 2007. And I'll find one from June. And this is what my blog looked like in 2007. Okay, so you could take students on a historical journey of, around the internet. More importantly, you can let them know what's posted on the internet stays on the internet. Okay, it is archived somewhere always. It can be found uh, unless it's been hidden by executive order. So, um, another little one here. Let me, let me show you a couple of things that I think that how many of you have access to an iPad or an iPhone? Most of you? Okay. Um, let me show you a couple of things then. Let's see if I can do this. Since I'm on my Wi-Fi. I just threw in some apps that I thought were kind of cool down here at the bottom. You'll, you'll see these apps here and these apps over here. Some of these are what they call augmented reality. Is anybody familiar with the app called Erasma? No? Okay. <coughs> You're fortunate that I have my own $20 bill today. Usually I have to beg one of those. Um, so let me get let me get on my Wi-Fi. Um, augmented reality is just all well, okay, let's do this again. Augmented reality is being able to point your app at something and make something else happen. Usually a video or a four-dimensional kind of uh, figure. So I'm going to, I am connected. That's good. Okay. So I have a $20 bill and I'm going to show you the back of the $20 bill. I'm not going to let anybody touch it to make sure it's a real $20 bill, okay? Because I'm afraid I won't get it back. All right. So let's pull up Erasma. It's A U R. A-S-M-A, -A. and why is it not showing me Erasma? It's not. It's not. Okay. <coughs> I lost my connection. Can you see it right there? Evidently. Let's try it one more time. I may be competing with the other I think I'm not getting a connection here. Or it could be that my MacBook Pro has messed me up. So that's always possible. So am I able to click these links? I should be. All right, so rather than do that, let's do this. I refuse to be defeated by technology. Um, and so I'm gonna turn this around here way. I don't need that. I'm gonna start using the Erasma app. So there are, on this, on this page, there are links to augmented reality apps that will allow you to point your camera at, for instance, there's one called Color, C-O-L-A-R. It will allow you to point your camera, let's see if that's my password or not, point your camera at a coloring page that your kids have colored on, and what's on the page will come to life in a three-dimensional video. And so, um, trying the other password here. 
So, like for instance, there's a page you can get to color that's of a bird with some worms at the bottom of the page. And when it comes up, the bird comes to life in the color they use to color the bird. And then it starts pecking around the page and eating the worms. It's a little gross that way. Okay, but um, let me see. It's a login problem. There shouldn't be a login problem. This is really ticking. Because I hate it when I tell somebody I'm going to do something and I can't get it done. So let's try this. I'm not sure you're going to be able to see this, but we'll see. I am logged into this one. There we go. All right, so I'm going to try my best to show you this. This is the $20 bill. And I have the Erasma app open. I'm going to point the Erasma app at the $20 bill. And everybody, everybody, let well, I me. Mean, you in the front row, you can't see it at all. Okay, so I'm going to do this. Let's see if this works. may not work because I am seeing through the $20 bill. Oh, sorry. Move out of reach. So as it's going, all the words are starting to come off, off the bill. Fireworks are going off. Okay, everybody sort of see that? Yeah. Sorry, I couldn't do it up here on the big screen for you, but you, know, it's, you get what you pay for. Okay. Um, so we're going to start using this next year at our school with the school yearbook. We will create video of the band playing or the choir singing or uh, the day that I get to go into the dunking booth at the beginning of the year. And when those pictures are laid out in the yearbook, there will be a little logo that says it's Erasmus enabled and kids can put their iPad, because we're a one-to-one -one iPad school, put their iPad over that page in the yearbook and that video will play to show them what happened that day. Uh, some teachers are doing this in their classroom when they have like a class set of iPads or iPods and they're putting little, what you do is you, you create the video and then you tie it to a trigger. And the camera is looking for that trigger. This particular video is looking for the back of a $20 bill. But I could make this sign right here my trigger. And if I point it at that trigger, any video will play. So you could use it for any subject matter, doing anything you want them to do. A uh, PE teacher could make a short video showing how an exercise is supposed to be done. Post a trigger on the wall. Maybe, maybe it's a, a picture of that exercise. Kid comes up, points their device, it shows them a 30 second video clip of how that exercise should be accomplished. They go do it, they go to the next station. Okay, so just little bits and pieces around to show you how it can be used in different areas, all right? I'm about out of time, that's not good. Uh, any CTE teachers in here? Okay. I have an entire Symbolu page here just for you. Of course there was a request. Of course there was. Oh, man. All right. You will see down here, there is a Symbolu page just for you. Uh, I'm not going to bother to try to fix that right now, but I will make sure it works after we get out of here. Um, and so, uh, let's see. There is probably something else that won't work here in a minute. Um, all right, let's go, let's hopefully go here. Yeah, Metrop Metropolitan Museum of Art. And a lot of museums, you're an art teacher, a lot of museums now are putting their artwork online. Some of them are adding lesson plans that talk about artists, talk about styles of, of work. You can use them in lessons. You can use them to help flip your classroom. You can just use it as a link on your web page to say, here's some extra stuff for you to go look at if you're really, really interested in what we talked about today. Or if you want to see more examples of the kind of work that you're doing in class. So they will take you through all of this. And so if I go like to middle school, um, so I am in, so here's stuff on the Ottoman Empire, so I can tie all this into social studies classes. 
um, geography, nations, um, all kinds of different things that I can do with Metropolitan Museum of Art. I will also say that in Chattanooga, anybody, anybody from around the Chattanooga area? I know a couple of you are. In Chattanooga, the downtown library in Chattanooga on the fourth floor, I believe it is, that entire floor is now a makerspace. <coughs> You can do field trips with your students to the, to the library of Chattanooga and spend a half a day there with them just making stuff in a maker space. It's awesome, fantastic. Uh, the Chattanooga, uh, the Nashville downtown library has some really great stuff for educators. So I would, look at the, I would uh, ask that you go there as well. If you are a foreign language teacher, any foreign language teachers in here? Okay, we're gonna pretend there's one. All right, um, this little site right here called .sub.com will allow you to put um, closed captioning on video in the foreign language that you want your kids to learn. So you can uh, translate it so that they can hear it in English and read it in the language they're learning, or it could be in the language you're teaching and you have an English subtitle at the bottom. So, uh, and they have several different languages that you can do that in, so that's, that is a possibility. And along with foreign language or whatever else you're doing, or if you're just a world traveler, this little app right here called WordLens. WordLens is a free app that comes, I think, with Spanish, but you can purchase other languages as an in-app purchase. But if I, if I put that on my cell phone and I am in France, and I point that at the tube station sign in French, it will automatically translate it to English on my phone. I mean, it doesn't just like say, this is what that sign says. All the letters rearrange themselves to English. The sign is now in English, okay? It's phenomenal. Um, little thing called word lens. I believe that got bought out by Google, so um, it'll probably go down as well. Um, and then let me just show you Kariki. Anybody familiar with Kariki? Nobody? Okay. Uh, Kariki is a new project, fairly new. Um, and a lot of the sites that you'll find now for lesson planning, they're doing something called crowdsourcing. And so Kariki is a wiki space where people are collaborating on lesson plans. You may not have ever met this person. But you're working together, you're creating a lesson plan, they come along, they take that lesson plan, they tweak it a little bit for their purposes, they put it over here, and people from around the world are writing these lesson plans. Um, and so when I look at um, resources, they say they are teacher contributed and teacher vetted. So it's like Wikipedia. Now, I know there is a problem of perception with Wikipedia. So let me just tell you what the research says about Wikipedia. Wikipedia is more accurate than the World Book Encyclopedia. Okay? It's more accurate. I don't want my kids going to the World Book Encyclopedia as a source either. I don't want them to use an encyclopedia as a source. I want them to go there maybe to get started on thinking about how to find a source. So Wikipedia is not entirely bad. All right, um, Kariki will be like that. These are teachers working, vetting stuff with other teachers, and what they're trying to do is basically replace expensive textbooks with crowdsourced curriculum. Okay, so that site's on there. And I have about five minutes left, so let me stop. Questions? I need to go back and talk about something I've glossed over. Please don't ask me to pull up something that didn't work. <laughs> what is the name of the, the web mixer that we can get on to get your resources? Great question. Go to edu.symbaloo.com to set up an account. Right. Okay. Yeah. That link. Okay. That link will be on the Leader U resources page, probably this weekend sometime. All the presenters have like given their PowerPoint files or whatever. This is all I got. Okay. Okay, all right, so and let me tell you, if you have an account, okay, um, you'll see that I'm logged into my account, and if I click over here on this little menu button, 
I can click that menu. These are all of the Simbaloo pages that I have that I've either borrowed from people or created myself. But I can come down here to the gallery and I can search any topic I want to see what Simbaloo pages have been made that have been made open to the public. Okay? So if I search biology, there are 1,100 Simbaloo pages for biology. And most of them will tell you, well, all of them will tell you, how many people are using that page? 6,000 people are using this page with a rating of four stars. That's probably got some stuff on it that's going to be pretty good for me. What they're showing you is a screenshot. So if I go here to view this web mix, it will show me that screenshot of what's there. And then I can say, okay, I want to add this web mix to my Simbaloo page. And then I can start using it. And whenever they update it with more tiles, it automatically updates for me the next time I go there. So the Simbaloo page that I've created for you today, if I, if I go back to it, whoops, that was not what I wanted to do. If I go back and I say, whoops, and I say, okay, I'm going to add some stuff to that. And so I come up here to options and I want to change the web mix size. I get these little arrows. You see these arrows over here on the side, right here, and arrows down here. That will allow me to either add another column or another row. I can keep adding tiles. I can make it as big as I want. And when I'm finished adding stuff, finish adding stuff, I just click this little button right up here, this little refresh button, and then the next time you log into it, you're going to have all the new tiles I put in there. All right, I'm about out of time. It's lunchtime. Any other questions? Anything you would like for me specifically to try to research and add to this? Yes. You you want to you want to see it? Is that what you're asking? Why is it there? Yeah, it is, and it, and it will take you to original documentation. Library of Congress is a fantastic site, not only just to go find archived artifacts, but they also have lesson plans for teachers as well. Uh, it, it is a fantastic site. Um, okay. Oh, one other thing I will show you, just as a point of interest, Grade Cam. Anybody familiar with Grade Cam? One of you. You like it? You use yeah, it? it? You like it? Okay. I, I presented to my teachers and had them Fantastic. Okay. So what Great Camp does is it gives you, you print off a form that is the answer key. You tell the answer key what it is. You take a, a shot of that with the Great Cam, and as kids fill out bubble sheets for you, Scantron kind of things for you, you just hold your iPad over those and it will automatically grade them for you. Boom. Boom. And yes. Set up. Yeah. So just a little thing that you know anybody of any discipline can use, not just math and English. All right, I'm done. Thank you very much for coming and sticking with me the whole time. I hope y'all enjoy lunch, and we'll see you back here in just a little while.